After five elections in two years, Bulgaria's parliament has finally approved its new government that will serve for 18 months. But it seems like an uneasy alliance. Two main political opponents, the centre-right Gerb party and the pro-European liberal coalition, we continue the change and democratic Bulgaria, have agreed to form a government. But there's a catch. The post of prime minister will change hands halfway through. As the country's president and pro-Kremlin parties remain highly sceptical of the union, the new government has pledged to pursue membership in the Schengen Free Area and the Eurozone to fight Russian influence and to guarantee support for Ukraine's defence. Let's take a closer look. After two years of political deadlock, marked by five elections, Bulgaria finally has a functioning government. Three-time Prime Minister Boyku Borisov's center-right GERB party, allied with the United Democratic Forces, have come to an agreement with rival and pro-Western We Continue the Change party, along with Democratic Bulgaria. 132 out of 240 Bulgarian lawmakers voted in favor of a new pro-European government. And he was right. On the April 2nd elections, GERB came first with 69 seats, followed by We Continue the Change, which won 64. But neither was enough to form a majority government. And being fundamentally at odds, they seem far from governing together. But with instability becoming the new normal, the political rivals had no other option than to strike a deal. Гласували 21 за 132 против 69. Няма въздържали се. Предложението е прият. Bulgaria's new prime minister, Nikolai Denkov, is a chemistry professor and former education minister. He is also a founding member of the centrist pro-European We Continue the Change. On the other hand, the new deputy head of the government is GERB's Maria Gabriel. She is a former European commissioner and alongside her new title, she will also serve as foreign minister. According to the deal, Gabriel and Denkov will have a rotational premiership. They will switch after nine months, and Gabriel will be the prime minister for the rest of the term. Bulgaria has long been plagued by corruption, having one of the worst track records in the EU. Now the government will have the difficult task of implementing long-awaited reforms. The nation has also struggled with its economy and has the worst income inequality in the union. And as the most recent voter turnout of just 40.7% shows, people are becoming tired of waiting for change. But hopes are emerging, albeit slowly, that the dust in Bulgarian politics may finally settle, at least for a while. To get more on this, I'm joined from Sofia by Romina Filipova. She is the chairperson of the Institute for Global Analytics. Romina, thank you very much for joining us today. So, Hi. once bitter political rivals, Bulgaria's Gerb party and a pro-European coalition have agreed to form a government, essentially ending a 30-month political crisis. But this deal is taking the country really into uncharted territory because it will be the first time that the post of prime minister will change halfway through. Uh, what do you think are the main political risks? Um, obviously, this has been a very hard uh, political decision to make, whereby uh, two of the major political contenders have agreed to enter into a uh, government uh, construction uh, together. Now, um, I have to say that, first of all, uh, this government is going to uh, persist for as long as the initial uh, conditions for forming it also hold, so that the uh, two parties are... Um, 
kept together. On the one hand, I think that there is a very clear political realization on the part of uh, both parties that this, this is a very difficult political construction, and therefore uh, this government is going to operate under a limited uh, time frame of uh, um, 18 months, and also there will be two rotational prime ministers, each from the two uh, parties, and the government is likely to focus on the fulfillment on very specific goals, especially related to uh, Bulgaria's uh, major uh, European integration aims, uh, including membership in the Schengen area and also uh, the Eurozone. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think it is very uh, clear to both parties that uh, there is a threat of implosion uh, that is a distinct possibility, perhaps on every step of the way, especially if there are uh, clashes over um, specific policies, but even more likely over uh, posts and uh, personalities. Now, overall, I would say that uh, uh, the most uh, interesting trend to observe over the uh, medium to also short term, perhaps, is how uh, each of those two parties is going to fare in the next round of elections, whenever it may be, and how uh, each of them is going to come out of this uh, very difficult political construction and the electoral repercussions that, uh, that uh, will be problematic, perhaps, for each of the two parties. Right, and as you said, there might be clashes over specific policies. We know that for the next nine months, the premiership will be held by six-year-old chemistry professor and former education minister Nikolai Denkov. Then it will switch to the GAD party's Maria Gabriel, who was a former European commissioner. Are we likely then to see two very different governing styles and priorities between the two leaders? And if yes, how will that affect implementing policies? Um, now, of course, we have to see whether uh, the first nine months uh, will be fulfilled indeed, and whether the government is going to last over the course of its first uh, designated term, uh, so to say. But uh, if it does last, it's important to mention that, of course, the uh, composition of the government itself and the concrete ministers are likely to stay on, uh, even under uh, Maria Gabriel's uh, prime ministership. So. I think that this ensures a high degree of uh, continuity. Right. On the foreign policy front, Gabriel will be the foreign minister for the next nine months. And then, according to reports, she will switch places with the Denkov, who will become foreign minister. Is there a risk of a dual or almost competing foreign policy under this arrangement? Uh, I think that it is unlikely because uh, the greatest degree of uh, compatibility uh, between uh, the two parties is exactly on the uh, foreign policy front. And I think that it's uh, clear that uh, both of those party and parties and the government coalition is going to uphold and substantiate Bulgaria's uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, orientation, particularly as it comes to membership in the Eurozone and the Schengen area, as mentioned already, but also when it comes to uh, uh, Bulgaria support for uh, Ukraine, because uh, on the very first days of the existence of this government, the major policy focus and discussions have been related to the types of uh, military technical assistance that Bulgaria can provide to Ukraine. So I mm. think that there will be a high degree of continuity, especially on the foreign policy front this between uh, Maria Gabriel and Nikolai Denkov. Right. And another potential very thorny issue here, because according to the agreement, the coalition government will make obtaining membership to the Schengen passport free area and joining the Eurozone as top priorities. But the government will have to deal with many pro-Russia parties who, on the other hand, want closer ties with Moscow. How will they manage to strike a balance, if at all? Now, uh, the pro-Russian challenge uh, is very significant here in uh, Bulgaria. It has to be said that uh, pro-Kremlin actors, spearheaded in particular by the revival uh, political party, uh, have attempted to sow chaos, uh, create disruption, and also um, continue the political instability in the country, which is in the uh, Kremlin's interest. And they have done so in a variety of ways, including through uh, viral uh, disinformation, uh, campaigns also on the basis of the organization of rallies for peace, 
quote unquote, and also through violence skirmishes uh, in parliament. So uh, this is a very dangerous uh, political and uh, societal development, but uh, I think that uh, nevertheless, uh, it's good news that uh, Euro-Atlantically oriented uh, government uh, has been formed. And I think that uh, this is a common denominator binding gap and we continue the, uh, the change. I think the pro-Russian threat uh, um, acted as a glue so that uh, they could form a government together. And uh, as long as they manage to find a stable uh, working formula, I think they will be able to uh, some extent uh, stave off uh, the pro-Kremlin challenge. Right, and we'll have to stop here for today. Thank you very much for joining us. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.